Imagine curling when all you can see is this, and the only thing that can help you is the voice of your sighted guide and a bit of luck. He's in the middle of the white. Okay, so come to me. But for Skip Jim Vinson, curling wasn't always this way. Back in the late 70s, uh, I could see at the time. Uh, curled for three, maybe four seasons. And didn't curl again until 2001, by which time I was legally blind. It's a, a very steep learning curve. If you had curled and then you curled without the vision, it, it's a totally different game. It was nice that I had seen it, you know, yeah. when I had my vision, but yeah, it's, it's a totally different game. Fast forward five years later, and today Jim is part of the 100 Mile House Blind Curling Team, a group of curlers with varying degrees of sight. My current vision level is, is barely 1% using only one eye and uh, there's a lot of distortion involved with that. When I look uh, out into the world, I have a fog, I have flashing lights, I have a checkerboard, I have black floaters, and so I'm needing to see through all that. I can't see the other end of the ice. Um, I can't tell that there's anything down there. I, mean, I can see people standing, but that's it. Even when I'm standing behind the house as a skip and I'm looking out at, at the rocks that are in play, I can't really tell what color they are. I have to remember whose is whose. <laughs> the blue one. Blue. Yep, definitely the blue. But despite their limitations, yep. these players yep. succeed yep. through modifications. Yep. You take the regular game of curling, and depending on the person's individual needs of vision, but it's basically taking a broom, having a sighted guide on ice, facilitate uh, the person in the hack that's ready to deliver the rock, and withhold, by holding a broom, closer to the player, uh, it should end up where the skip wants it at the other end of the house, if we're on the broom, as the phrase is known. Surrounded by friends with a common challenge, for the 100 mile blind curlers, it's more than just a game. So as much as I can talk the talk, not every day can I walk the walk. If I am not up to doing my advocacy work uh, a particular day because I am not feeling as strong emotionally, then I know I've learned that that's not the day that I want to go out and, and, and do my education and awareness of vision loss. Um, but, but in general, you, you maintain a positive attitude, you uh, develop these alternative skills, a uh, good sense of humor is, is really helpful, um, and you just combat life as, if, as everybody else is with all their struggles. Vision loss is a huge challenge, it's not easy. But you know, there's a lot of other things out there that aren't easy either. Today, blind curling has not only given these members a chance to participate in a sport they love, but also a platform to educate others on vision loss. What happens is, generally speaking, is people become recluse. And they don't want to leave their home. And because it is difficult and you are uncertain and you, your mobility does become impaired, the curling really, like I said, it helps for some people in the, in the blind community. That's their only outlet of physical activity. And it was also to help create awareness and education out there in the overall um, blind community and beyond that um, sports are, are available to many people with, with these adaptations. You know, the people that we've had that, you know, have moved away, um, you know, another one just quit, but the benefits that it had for their life, it was just really important.